you feel free to start whenever. Okay, hello and welcome to Frame Trapped episode six. Unfortunately, we were gone for two weeks due to I, I got busier at work uh, and my schedule changed up a lot. And then uh, Dopio, uh, because of that, we usually record on on Tuesdays, but now we have to record on Thursdays. It's very strange, but we're finally back for episode episode six, and somehow. We delayed enough to have, like, so much news to talk about that I don't know how this podcast is going to end. But, like, I feel like we're going to just grow beards longer I than mean... the beard I currently have. <laughs> I'm gonna well, actually, my beard yeah, is going to turn white. I'm going to look like Gandalf the Grey. It's going to be OD. I'm, I'm, I'm hyped for that. I might, I might actually have a beard for the first time in my life. But, yeah, how, how has your, your two weeks been, Dopio? I'm pretty good. I've been chilling. Uh, I have college stuff that I'm doing, and then um, just hanging out with people. I've been with my girlfriend, so that's. Not... Um, but yeah, like, I'm just excited. There's been a lot of like big news, like fighting game and otherwise. Uh, well, other than big news, we haven't talked about KOF yet. We, we finally have, have played it. We finally yeah. played it. I played it. I played it enough. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't played it a lot. I feel like you've played a lot more than I have. But I feel like we both have like I have enough experience that I'll be able to talk about it. And I've played I've played a bit. Let me. See. I'm opening my. But I think I've played like maybe total like twenty me, hours, thirty let hours. Let me check mine. Mine says fifteen hours. Twenty seven. But I've played at a friend. I played like uh one entire night straight at a friend's house. So that's probably like it's probably more like. 40, 30, 40, 30, 40, like something, somewhere in that range. But yeah, I think honestly, um, the game is really good. Like it was kind of shocking how good the game was. Um, I was kind of expecting like to be very mid about it. I, I kind of felt that way about a lot of KOF games where like, I think it's cool, but I just, I didn't really feel like it was for me. Um, but I was also really excited because I like, I really like Ash. I really like Athena and those characters were in the game. So cool um after playing it that game is the fucking vibes that game is so good like it's ridiculous because honestly the net code is really good um the ui well, and everything is really good oh what's up i don't think it's it's i don't think the net code i don't want to say it's great it's solid but like the thing is, is that like i'll I'll place the same people in strive and it'll be like a somewhat decent connection but like when i play in kof for some odd reason the connection just it's destroyed. Like, it just doesn't work in KOF. So, like, I think it's mostly just them realigning the drift, you know, that happens with uh, players playing, and then uh, other things like that. But I'm sure that'll come in a minor patch eventually. Yeah. But, yeah, the netcode is solid. It might. Yeah. It's good. It's, it's good enough where you can play people, and, like, you, you, it won't feel super bad. There's been, like, some frame drop issues and shit on PC, but... um hoping it'll be better uh like just well, how, how do you feel about the entire pc experience because i know a lot of people who have had like tons of issues playing on pc but yet my experience is like oh i just turn on the game and i play and i have no issues mine is kind of bad it's it's not been super bad but it's just tough like i notice on certain characters uh especially online the faster ones like i know with like kukri it's really annoying uh with like ramon even when i'm playing people that i know have decent connection like it'll like they're like sort of like it, it's not even like it's rollbacking it's just like they're like frame drops where like the character will like vanish and then just appear like and it feels really like weird like they're just like appear in different spots with like slower characters it's not as bad because you can kind of see where they're gonna be like um like with angel it's pretty easy but every character can like shimmy you and shit and it's like kind of tough to see especially if your like frames are dropping so that's kind of annoying. I've been I've been noticing that like the most. I think other than that, it's just been like, um, I've had like one crash. That's like I it. haven't had a single crash, and I hear it's pretty like people have been crashing a lot. Yeah, it's been it's been like kind of a rough experience for a lot of people. But honestly, overall for me, it's been pretty good. And I'm, I'm thinking for you, it's kind of the same as far as like PC stuff. Um, but rollback wise, it's solid. Uh, I think it's like play it's playable which is good um and which uh the characters are like incredible like i've been i did uh i i ended up learning ash loops uh like day like three or something because i'm like oh this is like really fun and then the just combos are sick um it feels like a very like 
it's super fast paced, but it also doesn't feel like really um how to say like it doesn't feel like XX or it doesn't feel like like a lot of fast paced games where it feels like very like uh like belligerent or something like I don't know if that's the word, but it's like like violent. It doesn't feel like I'm like jumping at you and like like 50 15 you and then like you're just dying right like immediately it feels more like oh i'm playing like footsies right like i'm i'm super hard playing footsies and i have to like think about like when they jump and when they don't jump and then i have to like you know like playing ground in that game is hard which is good but it's also like fair because like you know what options your opponent has before they jump it's just that like you have to see and then like 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 you know understand what they can do in order for you to be able to react to it, which is good the, the biggest thing about the neutral for me is that, like, this is the first fighting game that I'm playing where the neutral sort of forces you to interact. Like, not inherently, like, Guilty Gear, where Guilty Gear, like, they want you to move forward and they want you to do these things and you get inherently rewarded for it. But I mean, like, in the sense that, like, because short hops are so prevalent in the game, it, it forces you to, like, hey, make sure you're at least covering the short hop, you know? Make sure you're at least covering the low angle, you know? There are so many options that you need to be covering that, like, even when you're watching the, this type of game at a high level, it looks like they're just swinging at each other when in, in reality, they're just, like, they're actually just trying to cover options in neutral. And I haven't played a fighting game that's, like, oh, I'm supposed to, like, when my opponent's, like, this far from me, I need to be covering this angle yeah. at least, you know? And it's just, it's just very different. Where, like, before, I was very comfortable with just down backing all the time, you know? And I'm just like, whatever, I'm going to get thrown. I don't care, you know? Yeah. Stuff like that. But now I have to play in a way that's like, okay, I have to press this big button to discourage this type of play style. Once I've done that, then they can either roll at me or they can uh, do lows at me, right? Which both have, like, a sort of counterplay, but it's still, yeah. like, it's different from, like... A game that's like i can just block forever uh, as much as i want and my opponent doesn't get any reward because i can just react to whatever option they pick exactly like i think the game the game incentivizes that kind of play style and it's cool because like each different thing has different responses and you know and like the neutral in the game just feels really deep and cool uh and it's really i think it's also really intuitive like yeah and also the way the frame data works is awesome too so like oh I, not... I don't I, I i don't this is just a nitpick this is honestly like Bounty's nitpick of the week. Uh, I dislike that frame traps aren't good in this game. I don't like oh. that. It get, just because, like, whenever you go for a throw in this game, it means that, like, you got, like, this tiny amount of doubt that, like, yeah. they could be mashing as much as they want. And mashing's not inherently rewarding because uh, confirms are a bit harder in this game because you have to do the, the light, 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 right? And a lot of characters don't typically uh, have a single light that they can confirm off of, right? So they have to go uh, A, A, C, A, C, A, C, right? Yeah. So it's like uh, they can't exactly do that consistently while they're mashing. But it's yeah. like it's just a, a little bit frustrating that like I'm playing Terry, you know, a Shoto character. I should have strong frame traps, but I don't. So it's like whenever I'm trying to do my throw game, I have to think of it differently. I have to go for like a short hop. And then the short hop becomes a mix-up of the throw because yeah. th that's where your good frame data comes from is the short hops. Yeah, honestly, yeah, that one's kind of that's a little bit offsetting to me too. But I got I got to kind of down pretty fast, like with with how to like use jumping and like uh, condition them to block, like using short hops and stuff. But yeah, that's that's been kind of interesting. I think overall the game's good. Like the game, the game is good. Like it's it's a great game. Like. Uh, as a quote-unquote fighting game boomer uh, who's been playing these games forever, it reminds me of the days when I'm playing Street Fighter 4. Now, of course, these combos aren't as hard as Street Fighter 4, and that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that, like, uh, it rewards a certain level of, of skill of past fighting game genres that other games of recent memory don't, right? which is really fun for me because I am a fighting game boomer and I have all these skills that I don't have to relearn again. So it's fun when I can engage with a deep combo system that KWAP has because I am learning new things because I've already learned everything else. Exactly. And I think, yeah, that's what's cool about it. Personally for me, uh, I, would, I would really much so prefer that they give 13 rollback and then I would just play that. Uh, but I, I think would too, I would too. 
Yeah. I think having just, it is, is cool. Yeah, I think I, I'm just into, like, I think my favorite thing about KOF is 13's graphics, and then it's the gameplay. Like, I just love the way that 13 looks, uh, and I would play it in a heartbeat. It's just that, like, I think that it's also, also really tough for them to implement that in that game, because it's, like, a lot newer game, and, like, the animation style is so, like, striking that it's probably difficult for them to do. I just hope that it's something that they get to, uh, like, down the line. Uh, I also really like that game's, like, uh, like way of doing combos, because it, it's a little bit more like, uh, it's just a bit more Kusoga, and you know how I am. So, um, the other thing that I don't think a lot of people are talking about, and I actually think they're low-key trashing on it, is uh, K-Lost presentation. Um, yeah. A, a, lot of, a, a lot of things about the presentation is quote-unquote, like, bland. Like, but yeah. the, th- the thing is, is that, look at, like, Street Fighter Five. I know Street Fighter Five gets a lot of, like, Flack about, yeah. you know, poke the bear, you know, yeah. elements and stuff like that. But it's like, in my opinion, especially if you look at earlier Street Fighter Five, like season two of Street Fighter Five, you look at that UI, that UI is stale. That UI is boring. But whereas, yeah. like, if you look at, like, the KOF UI presentation, it's striking in specific ways. Like, for example, like, one thing that's really cool is that the meter is yellow, and it's the only type of meter in the game that's yellow so when you're looking at the game it's striking from an eye color situation right like, it's like the only thing that that's that's that color so it hits your eye for it like it hits yeah, your eye really yeah nice. yeah it, it hits your eye very nicely whereas like everything else is blue so then you you without even like looking directly at my meter i know how much meter i have because of the the yellow bar it's very similar to how uh, guilty gear does tension how it goes from uh, green to, to white, uh, yellow to yeah. red. So green to orange to yellow. Or yeah. Green to orange to red to yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it does and it does that type, and it makes it so it's easier for one little look from the eye. You can get it done, right? But it's yeah. a similar way, but it's just yellow, right? And then uh, also like the lobbies, okay? Uh, to quote uh, Maximilian, dude, I don't need none of this hobble hotel bullshit, okay? You play you play KOF 15. There is no Hava Hotel bullshit, and you can just you can just go into the ranked lobby, and it's a ranked lobby. You hit the Q button, and it's a Q button. Okay, no no stupid bullshit to stop me from playing the game, you know? And it's incredible. I mean, there's no lobby soccer, so I don't I don't know. I'm not but really. It's big true. Fan. There is there is no lobby soccer, which lobby uh, lobby soccer is honestly the best part of Xrd. Uh, I don't think I can. It is pretty goaded, but almost. I, I think it's better than Bedman, but like Bedman's a close second. It's Bedman, then it's Lobby. Song. I honestly, um, I I like I like cool designs and shit like that, but I get it. Like my biggest gripe with the game, which I, I think is unfair, but I have it anyway, is that it's it's just it like KOF thirteen is the I think is like the peak of like sprite work in fighting games, like ever. It's 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 very good. I mean, even if it's not like the peak, the peak, right? It's like incredible and it's just like it's a sh- it's just shame because i think KOF 15 15 looks good i just don't think it's like i don't think it can really hit that level ever because i don't think you can really do that with 3d like unless you put an ungodly amount of time into that it's just not realistic and i have a a very similar gripe where it's like it's not necessarily the graphics it's the most of the animations are actually direct like takeaways from uh kof 14 mm. like kof 15 is basically like a repackaged like kof 14 championship edition if you look at it right but so though, i think it's a little bit better than that but it, it, yeah yeah because they updated like some of the textures right but it's the lighting, the textures i think the, the ui is a lot better the lighting is a lot better like it, 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 it's still like a lot of the animation work is just Re, just rehashes of KOF 14. Like, yeah. Luong, her super is literally just her KOF 14 super. But it's still, yeah. like, it's a little disappointing, especially, like, I don't know how controversial it's going to be, because there's a bunch of characters from KOF 14 that are removed from this game when they come into KOF 15 and they don't have anything new. Yeah, that's right? true. Right? Like, like, do you, is somebody going to spend $10 on a, a team pack to get a character from KOF 14? But it's just the same animations, like probably because now I they can put rollback well, and again. But it's it's like, is it worth it? Like, 
Probably. It's just a, a, a little frustrating that uh, this is the package that we got. Like, I feel like if they've worked harder on a better version of KOF 14, like for an extra year and a half, you know, we could have had this a couple years ago. But they made KOF 14, and it was disappointing. And then now we have KOF 15. I but, think the game was better than KOF 14, though, to be oh, fair. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Everything's, everything's way better than KOF 14. I'm not saying that the 15 is bad. I'm just saying that, like, some of the practices to create 15 is kind of bad. But... Uh, with that being said, I think we're both in agreement that, like, 15's a great game. It's fun. Uh, it's good for me to have a game that I can ask friends to play where I'm not wanting to blow my brains out because the game's so easy. True. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, games that are easy and for babies, uh, Persona 4? Oh, are we, are we going to Persona 4 now? <laughs> but, yeah, uh, Persona 4 Arena had, had its, a uh, new release date announced. At least that's what I'm calling it. But Finally, it's, the, I have uh, a mic right here, but I'm not gonna do that. The, uh, the, the, the fake, the fake release date is, I believe, March 22nd. Uh, let me check. I have Steam right now. Uh, let me because I pre, I uh, got actually got gifted the game. Um, what monster did you bother Moopoke? And then he for yeah, I did have Moopoke. I'm like, hey, hey, man. I'm trying to hop on that stream, you know what I'm saying? And he's like, he's like hey, dog, you. hey. Yo, he hooked me up. March 16th, uh, 2022. That's the official release date on Steam. Oh, wait. So, yeah. like, two weeks from now, uh, yeah. it'll be the fake release. I'm calling it that because it also, in the same announcement for the release date, they announced that Rollback would be coming, which is, yeah. woo! Let's so, go, Rollback! I'll, I'll, give, I'll give a timeline of events because I know some people in here are probably not, not super familiar with everything. But basically, at the Game Awards, they announced that they were finally bringing uh, Persona 4 Arena, um, or Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, specifically the 2.5 version, to uh, modern consoles. So they're bringing Persona to modern consoles. Hi, like Persona, the, the fighting game. So it's, it's going to be on Steam, which is the first ever PC port of that game. Uh, it's going to be on a PS4, all modern consoles and stuff. So that's awesome. That was already, like, mm -hmm. great. They also said, and this is something that, like, really got me hyped for, that it's going to be specifically the 2.5 version. So uh, the version that we have in, in the States is uh, Ultimax 1.1, which is a solid game. I think it's a very good game. There's still people that play it, right? Um, and yeah, like it's, it's a cool game. It's just that it doesn't do a lot of things like perfectly, right? And we, for a long time, the reason the game was kind of like in a lull was because in Japan, there's a different version, right? There's the, the 2.5 version. And that game is only an arcade. Right? It's actually a big motivator for me to build this thing because I actually wanted to put uh, Persona 2.5 in this. Mm -hmm. I never got that to work, but uh, I really, really wanted to play that version. I've heard it's kind of kind of wacky. It uh, is. It is wacky. Uh, no, you, you, you think shadows are broken right now? What if I mean, shadows aren't broken in 1.1. But in, in, in that version of the game, they are. They're going to be fucking crazy. Yeah, um, yeah like... they. they the only shadows that are playable in the current version are like Shadow Mitsuru, and then Shadow uh, Yu, Majo? and then Shadow Naoto. Right? According Majo? to LK's tier list, which he uploaded, uh, not his, he didn't upload the tier list. He had a tier list and he talked about it like recently on his YouTube. It's like the best shadows are like Mitsuru, Naoto, Chie, because you can like those characters can like uh, do. Th they have game plans that like every like the other shadows know, so like they can TO to you, uh, and then. Uh, Mitsuru is basically the same, but she's, like, she can just TO to you instead of having a, a burst, which is, like, pretty good. Uh, same thing with Naoto, because she can do, like, shotgun, shotgun, uh, Hamon, and then kill you instantly, uh, because it takes all your fake counters. And then Chie just TODs you, but, uh, you, like, Shadow you, like, Shadow, Shadow Narukami and then Shadow Yosuke are only good, because, like, Yosuke and Narukami are, are insane, so, like, those characters are just those characters, like, the original characters, but worse. Uh, Shadow Teddy was like whatever, but he was also kind of played. Uh, well, but te 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 Teddy was played more than the Shadow Teddy. Yeah, Teddy was definitely played more than Shadow. But it's um, like the thing is, is that like coming into this new version is that like literally half of the cast, uh, their Shadow version just becomes playable. Like Shadow yeah. Junpei, monster. Shadow Naoto, monster. Shadow, Shadow... Uh, Yukari, monster. Yeah, Yukari. Like, like half of the cast, it's literally like you're going to be playing shadow characters more than actual vanilla characters, uh, which is, more often than well, not. I think, I think using them is, is really dope, and it's a mechanic that isn't really seen in modern games. 
though it can veer on the side of being fucking broken. I mean, it, what do you mean? What do you mean veer? This is like this is like you know that highway meme where it's like being balanced and like being broken. They fucking drifted into it. They're in like a Ford Fifty Seven and they're drifting into it, and the cops are behind them, but they don't give a shit. They're driving up the ramp anyway. There's a little pit. There's a little the ramp. Oh yeah, you're talking about the yeah the the, the swerving the 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 label on top of the ramp is like hooked on Oken. Yeah. Yeah, they're Dude, swerving into it. I'm actually, I, I want to fucking like hit someone, like beat someone around one with my with my fundies and my neutral and persona. The yeah, fighting. yeah, yeah, and yeah. Round really, two, really. I want to, I want to hit them with a jab, burst, right? And I'm playing fucking, I don't know, Shadow Drew, Bay, brr, bing, brr, bing, and I just TOD them. That shit is gonna be OD. I want to fucking love it. Um, that I'm really happy. Like, I know Mu, uh, Mu Poke is actually doing. And if you guys don't know who Mu Poke is, please go follow him. He's like, he's he's been the main guy doing persona content since like ever like right now he's the only since, guy doing since it. since 2016 yeah since the game kind of like was in a lull period he's been the main guy doing content but uh the discord for the game was actually has been very active for like months because people playing on ps3 emulators on parsec uh, i actually hate being on that discord i'm actually going to leave it after this really? podcast because, because for every single announcement and sometimes they don't oh, they add like, everyone yeah yeah they add was... every single person in the discord and sometimes it's not even pertaining to the game like yeah. I'm just like please dog like calm down. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I'm gonna stay because I know I'm gonna want to find games against people, but yeah, I can agree that, that the Discord can be a little bit hectic sometimes. But they do a lot of really good events, and if you're interested in playing the 1.1 version, I mean, I don't know why you would, but they they do host events for for uh, stuff I on Parsec. I believe their last monthly had like a seven hundred dollar prize pool. Yeah, which it is was like, a massive monthly. They were like, this well, is I the mean, last I mean. Month- it, it, it's the quote unquote last monthly before the f- official release, which it probably yeah. inflated the price pool. But typically, they get over like a hundred dollars for the price pool, which is really, which good, is really good for a community event. Yeah, um, I think overall, like, yeah, the the game is just in a really solid spot in terms of like how it's gonna go going forward. I hope the offline. My my hope is that the offline scene is like popping. Honestly, I don't think that'll happen. The issue is is that like. There's too many fighting games, the new fighting games coming out right now, and it's like, are we really going to fit in uh, Persona that came out 10 years ago? Yeah, but I mean, it's like a new version, and like, a lot of people like Persona. It, a it, lot I of mean, people. Like, I mean, like, I get paid to run locals, and I'm not even like, I'm not gonna run that. Sorry. Do me a favor, dog, come on! You gotta, you gotta build the scene. I'm honestly, I honestly wanna play this game, because I've wanted to play this game for like fucking years, and this is my chance. So. High key, if I like the version and I'm like vibes, I might I might just like play this. I'm I'm looking at it. KOF I was kind of iffy on. I was like maybe maybe not. It's like up in the air. But after I just don't know if I like have the uh, the like commitment to the game. And I I don't know. I want to play like a uh, like a real fucking like some some bullshit. I want to like play some fucking stupid. Shit. So this game seems like it's gonna be fun and like fucking ridiculous. So I'm hyped for that. Uh, I'm definitely gonna be in Mupok's chat when he's doing the uh, when he's hosting the 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 launch. I, I'm I'm staying away from the Kokium chat. That's what I'm gonna do. You but, gotta stay uh, there, dude. Come on. Uh, pull when, up. The, when the game comes out, I'll probably learn like a basic uh, corner to corner combo with you, and then just rock that until somebody actually wants to play the game with me. That's fair. I'll play the game. Yeah, will you? I'll hit you with Shadow Meet. I'll hit you with jab, like like a, a two way with Shadow Meet through, like bonk you out of the air. Uh, hit you with a hit hit you with Stinger burst, and then just like TOD. Why, why would like, I what? jump? Why the fuck did I jump? What is wrong with me? Why why like, did I jump though? Oh, you don't jump. Yeah, my I bad. Jump. I'm gonna jab you from like half screen away, and then I'm gonna Stinger you, and then that I'm makes more burst. sense. That, that makes yeah, more sense. Like, yeah. I'm That's gonna play. Foots, I'm gonna use my footsies and my 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 fighting game fundamentals, and I'm gonna jab you from half screen away. It's gonna be great. I'm gonna love it. Oh man, I'm excited. I like, think I'm excited talking about it. I'm so hyped to the play biggest, this game. The biggest thing for me about that game is that I really like the system mechanics in that game because uh, one, uh, meter's pretty cool uh, in that game. It's similar to, it's like as if you put Exert and Blaze Blue together. Kind of. And uh, the way the status effects work. The status effects are my favorite oh, mechanic in that game. That shit is very so cool. cool. That's what makes like Kanji run. It's very cool. Uh, for those that don't know, like they directly take the status effects from Persona and directly apply them into the game. That's what makes Yosuke fucked up because uh, his, his, one of his status effects on his Persona is called like 
confusion, and it makes it so that it reverses your inputs. So you have to block oh, the process yeah. with reverse inputs, right? And then uh, Kanji, he has a bunch of lightning effects, which causes paralysis, which makes it so that you can't move forward or back, and your only decisions are either mash or jump. Yeah. So it makes it so that, like, Kanji has a very interesting, like, he's technically always playing in the corner, because you have to yeah. you can only jump vertically. Um, the, what, the, the most fucked up one that I've seen is uh, Teddy has one where um, when he his DP is like you can't safe jump it because uh, it doesn't do any damage. But if you block it or get hit by it, it makes every single hit that he does unblockable. Yep. So uh, that's kind of fucked up. There's the uh, enrage uh, one where you can't block but you deal more damage. That one. That one is a uh, uh, Adachi. So when Adachi, when he puts you in awake, when he gets put in awakening, he gets a new super. Awakening is like when you're low HP, you get new supers and shit. And uh, if he hits you, he can do. It's called Magatsu Mandala. He does Magatsu Mandala, knocks you up, you land, and he can set up a like a super fucked unblockable where you like can't do anything, and he just hits you and then does it again, and you get put back in the rage because because you're raged, you just can't block anything, so you just get you get hit. Um, it's kind of fun. The other thing that's kind of a, a a little bit annoying about the game is that like the OSs are very strong. The, typically, yeah. you can you can OS because the way the game works is that they wanted the game to be very easy to play on pad, so they put it's it's very akin to Dragon Ball Fighters. But Dragon Ball Fighters thought about OSs, Persona didn't, and you can OS typically you can OS your DP with other options pretty reliably, and it's actually pretty fucked up. No oh, shit, I didn't actually know about that. You can like press a. It's like you can like input a button and uh, the DP input, and then it'll like come out. It'll come out as DP if you get if you get like a. If you don't whiff the DP, but then if you like want to whiff, you just get a jab or something. That's what's crazy. No, well, it's not a jab. It's like a. It's with the throw, I believe. What you do is do you like you press the DP, but then you plink the throw input, and if you yeah. go for throw, you tech the throw, and if they don't, you get DP. Oh shit! So it beats like uh like um what should we call it? Like, uh, poke throw shit. Like, if they try to jab you, you can just DP it out. They have to block it, basically. That's kind of crazy. The other thing that, that makes me excited about this game is that, uh, uh, playing BB Tag, uh, I really like the Persona characters and the way Persona the characters move and whatnot, right? And playing BB Tag, uh, sort of, uh, made me want that experience because, like, BB Tag, the way you do throws is that, uh, for people that don't know in BB Tag, when you press throw, you run, and then you throw them. Like, the, the game will just Oh, run. like in, in Melty. Well, the thing is, is that in Melty, it's not, uh, you can still do it normally. Like, you don't, like, it doesn't automatically put in the run input. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you just do it from neutral in Melty, you, you, like, step forward and do it? Uh, no, no, The way it works is that you press, you press the throw button, and you can let go of your stick, and your character will run forward and then throw when they get up to the other character. Okay. Right? And so yeah. this this made tick throws very funky. Okay? Because you would press you would press jab jab and then you'd press the two buttons and then a run would come out. Right? Yeah. And you're just like, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to throw them. So yeah. it, it made it made like throws sort of clunky, but that, that game doesn't necessarily need throws and it's not balanced around throws, it's balanced around yeah. instant overheads and dirty shit. Yeah. But it's a it's a tag. But like uh the good thing about it is that I can play Persona, get the experience of playing these characters without having that stupid tick throw issue. That oh, the tag. tick throw issue, yeah. I was about to say, I thought you were going to say, oh, we can play Persona without having stupid bullshit. I'm like, fucking word, dog. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I know there's oh, bullshit. Shit, I know there's bullshit in Persona, but it's like. Yeah. It's if, not like. The game is functional. Like you can. The game there's no, is, no, no, no weirdness well, or anything. Like I like I feel like I, I can go through like a standard fighting game like decision making process instead of yeah. like oh I lost neutral now I have to guess oh I guessed wrong lost the round even though that I know happens. that's that, I know that happens in Persona but it's it's like it's not it, I know it's not niche it just that isn't going to happen every round like yeah, that's not yeah. that's not the consistent gameplay it's going to happen like once every like. Probably two out of five rounds, I want to say, is good ratio. Yeah, I'd say I'd say about so because the power of shadow characters is that when they beat you on the first round, you're they're gonna fuck this like they're gonna fuck you up like they're gonna yeah. do some crazy shit to you the second round. But if you beat them, they're very far behind, and 
because they don't have defensive mechanics, they get like messed up even harder by like the the normal characters. Because then you're like, let's say you're up ha- like up a life, like you know, up um, up like half uh, half a health bar, and you're like, you you knock them down. They can't burst. They don't get like uh, I don't think they get a roll either. I'm not sure. They get I they mean, lose they, a lot they, on a couple. They can burst. But it would be a bad decision as a shadow character. Well, it doesn't like it doesn't get them off you. It's just like a uh, it's the shadow burst that like saw your man. So, um, like there's a lot of like really uh, like problematic things that that shadow characters like really good defensive mechanics that like shadow characters don't have. So the normal characters when they're up on shadow characters is really good. But if it's the op- other way around, it can get really swingy because like the shadow characters are really powerful when they have when they have bar and they're up around. Um. But yeah, I, I kind of get what you mean, though. Also, BB Tag got rollback, finally, so that's kind of cool. Um, hype not, for the people who That's are... not on the list. Why are we talking about this? We're bringing, we're bringing it up, dude. Game. I don't want to talk about BB Tag. I hate that video about... game. But uh, I guess we can talk about it if you I want. Mean, yeah, if I mean, yeah, I would just go up right What's up? If you're desperate to talk about BB Tag rollback, we can. No, I just wanted to shout out uh, all the you know all the role players and the BB tag lobbies. You know, yeah, yeah, the role players, true, true. You guys are the real, you're, you guys are the real homies of the fighting game community. You guys, you guys, put, they're not put my it, homies, but they're there. I'll <laughs> shout them out. Fuck <laughs> it, <laughs> but no, like uh, no, just I wanted to bring it up. Like yeah, uh, BB tag got its rollback finally. So all of the games that were announced for Arxis to get rollback minus Persona Four uh, got their rollback. So. Um, I'm hoping that they do more games in the past. I don't know what else they could do uh, that they're missing. Cause they, yeah, 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 I don't think there's anything else that they could do. There's yeah, like there's nothing. no other game. There's that no Arc- other Arc- specific Arc- game that we both like. Yeah, that they could I think do. Other, all the games that they could ever need have a role, have having a rollback. Like I can't think of any video games uh, that have like Bedman or that need rollback for the community to like. No games, none, none whatsoever. None, none. I think honestly, the game. They could, they could just stop here, right? Oh, no, I'm forgetting one. Actually, uh, DBFZ. Uh, honestly, honestly, I think if you win, if the Arc System works office, you know how they always have those long hallways with, like, posters? Yeah. I think they, I think they recently took the Exert poster off the wall, and they threw it into a, a shredder. They're like, finally, there's the rollback. <laughs> a rollback to, like, this is a better fucking game. Throws yeah, it in. exactly, exactly. I think that's what they did with the Exert one. But... Oh, but yeah, uh, Persona. I'm I'm not genuinely excited about Persona because uh, I think honestly them selling it, reselling it at, at like double the price without rollback on release is kind of like a dick move. Or, you wait, know? really? I mean, it's like it's like forty dollars, right? It's uh, like, it's like, dude, this third? game came out ten years ago, and you're gonna sell it back to me at forty dollars. It's thirty on Steam, and if you have well, uh, it's, Persona... th- it's thirty if you have the Persona. No, 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 no. It's thirty normally. It's uh, twenty or twenty-five if you have uh, the bundle. I think it's but... like twenty if you have the bundle. Oh, okay, if it's twenty dollars, that's fair, but that still requires an extra purchase of Persona Four. Yeah, but well, it's I mean, don't still... you your Persona Fours? I mean, I'm just thinking like this game came out ten years ago. Like, stop trying to like milk. This is another uh, complication of like. Fighting games are expensive to play. They just are, and it's unfair yeah. to everybody who plays fighting games. Um, That's fair. I mean, as a Yu-Gi-Oh player, I, I I don't even fucking have an opinion about about how expensive I do my hobby. But like, you know, I can kind of get it. Like it, it is a problem in the sense that like I think, especially with these older titles, they should be cheaper. Like I think KOF does a really good job. Yeah, KOF fucking... is perfect, perfect example. Oh, and they did a good job with AC plus R. Yeah, and fucking... like, all the Blaze Blues, it's just Persona that's the issue where they're selling it at such a high price. Yeah. I think, the I game think, is I, I think that's well. mostly Atlas coming in, right? Probably. It's, I think they know that they can sell Atlas. it. Because yeah. it's a, it's a newer, they're using the excuse of, like, this is a newer newer version, and uh, the game has never been released on PC, right? Whereas, like, ACR has goes on sale for, like, five, right? But it's, like, 15 normal sets, like, fine. Um, and, like, even Skullgirls and stuff is a little bit more pricey nowadays, but like those games go on sale, which is good, right? And I think with the sale, Persona is going to be like fifteen dollars, twenty dollars. So that's a good. I actually think that's a decent price. For it's a version that's never been released, so I think like okay, that's cool. It's like a kind of a new, like it's kind of a new game. What's but... even crazier that I'm seeing from this Arxis trend of putting rollback and all their old stuff is that like some games that could have like huge swaths of money put into them 
if it had rollback, for example, Grand Blue versus, like, why hasn't that happened yet? Same thing with DBFZ. I think. I, I mean, D, they could literally put a rollback in DBFZ, release a whole new season, and they would make millions. Like, I, I don't know why they're not doing that. But yeah, I mean, like, I, I'm saying less so for DBFZ because I feel like Grand Blue versus has more of that wailing, like, oh, I love Grand Blue crowd that will like buy oh. anything. Are you sure they bought? I, three seasons of DLC passes and a battle pass that they put in from the last announcement that they had and a new character with no announcement of a battle pass. Did you buy it? Uh, no, I'm not. I am anti-gotcha all the way. I uh, know, but I'm saying like, like, no, but that's true. But like, I'm, I'm not saying like from a mod, like how much money more arcs is to make, but I'm saying how many people would play the, like, I know for a fact, if you put rollback in DBFZ, fucking so many people would just play that game. Yeah, yeah no they, would. they would. Yeah. Like, that would be a game where, like, it's, like, the same thing with, um... Look at it, like, Third Strike. Like, people would just play that. Because they're, like, they're, like, oh, well, this is my fighting game. Like, I love this. I can't, like, play it. I love, I love getting fucked by Gogeta. Like, three different versions of, go go uh, uh, fused Goku and Vegeta. This shit's godlike. I fucking love this. Right? It's crazy. I'm, I'm, like, whatever. Um, like... But, like, the thing is that, like, I feel is that DBFC, although it already has, like, a committed crowd, like, I feel like most of the FGC already owns that game. I feel like not all the entire FGC owns Grand Blue Versus. No, they don't. So I feel like if a rollback announcement came out, it would be like, hey, FGC, you see this game that you haven't bought yet? Come buy it, you know, and stuff like that. that so That is true, but I also think that a uh, there's, like, a, there's, the problem with that game is that it's kind of, like, also past the point where I could get an audience. You know what I mean? Like it has an. Don't get me wrong. Uh, no, no shade at like the grand. I, 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 mean, I don't think that's. I don't think that's a fair comparison because we're we're really? getting in Persona Four Arena with rollback and BB Tag with rollback. Okay, so. but Persona Four, Persona Four Arena, and BB Tag and Blazable Central Fiction all have like people who like those those games. Like, mm -hmm. not in the sense of like like uh from a like the game itself. Like I'm talking like the IP. Yeah. Like in the fighting game space. There's people who love Blaze Blue. There's people who love Persona and Uni and all, all the shit that's in BB. There's people who play BB Tag, right? And then there's uh, people like there's people now that I know that got into Persona with P5 and like other stuff that are gonna buy this game because like they're Persona fans. They want to play the game, right? Like it's a really ingenious move to like sell that. Game. The thing with Grand Blue is like in the West, there's not that many people who play like. Like th that are like super so fucking committed to the gotcha that they're like, I gotta get my fucking fix. I, I don't fucking... know. Ha have you seen Gen the Genshin Impact subreddit? Genshin I'm is like a different. Saying. I'm talking like like general gotcha, not Genshin, not the fucking not not the horny, not the not not the horny people. I'm talking like the fu I I fuck people. I'm friends with like people like it, but like high key. I think I think I don't think it would be as. Crazy for Grand Blue. I think it would still be big though. Don't get me wrong. I would buy the game. I think. Maybe. The biggest thing that I'm worried about is that like, Grand Blue does get announced that it's getting rollback, and then DBFC get announced that it's, that it gets rollback, and then a tumbleweed crosses the yeah. figure. And then all the all the extra are just sitting here like. Yeah, we're just like. So like when, when's our turn, dog? You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm imagining like like like. A huge stadium, right? That's filled with people. And when they announce Grand Blue Versus gets rolled back, those people leave, right? And like half the stadium leaves. Then uh, they announce DBFZ gets rolled back. Another half of the stadium leaves. And then there's just like three dudes in like the third row who are like, hey, I want eggs and roll back. When's eggs When's it happening? <laughs> that's what I'm worried about. And then they're like, and then the, the president, like, Daisuke Ishiwatari, like, walks off the stage without even acknowledging them. In fact, he hires snipers from the top of the, the stadium to shoot them. He calls it, he's like, Kojima, send me one of those, uh, what do you call them? Uh, metal, yeah, please send me no, one of those. No, he, he calls Majin Obama. He goes, Majin Obama, get the shot. And then he's like, I got the shot. <laughs> <laughs> Majin Obama works. Okay. But yeah. No, I, 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 I think... I actually think Exit Rollback has a very good shot of happening. Um, like, memes aside, I, I genuinely think it's something that will happen. I just don't know how soon. The, it's, biggest, it's, 
the biggest thing for me is that like by the time excerpt rollback happens i will have moved on from excerpt you know like excerpt's like and like for me personally you know by the time it happens i'll probably be like playing project l by the time it happens true but what if they announce it like after after persona maybe the thing is is that like persona is coming in june like, june or july you know the summer and it'll probably drop if they do it it'd probably drop like september ish so, october ish yeah uh, september ish october ish but what if what if say to for riot to have a good year in 2023 they're like project l february no, beta, no, December, no, beta, way. December. You're come on, that. come you're on. Not <laughs> I'm Holy just shit. saying. I'm just, it down, Bryce. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, man. Like, for me personally, for this, for Exert to happen, for rollback, I would have personally moved on. Like, I'm not even given the time of day. You know, by the time it happens, I get it. Honestly, I don't feel the same. I think I would play it a lot more. I. My main issue, the reason I don't play x more is just because I, I, like, there's no incentive for me uh, as a person who can, like, play other games that have rollback. Um, yeah, it's just harder to, to connect with people now. Uh, and it's also, it's, it's multifaceted. Like, I don't, the game doesn't have an offline presence. It's really hard to find that sort of, like, competitiveness offline. And now with, like, majors opening up again and, like, uh, there being events that are, like, you know, good, uh, it's kind of tough. Um, but... Like, regardless, I hope that Persona, like this reinvigorates re Persona community, I hope I can attend the offline events for that game. Uh, I don't, again, I'm, I'm unsure about it too, but let a man dream. I don't know. But past Persona, uh, another news thing happened while we were gone. Oh. Uh, Street Fighter Fix 6 had its uh, teaser. Okay. We're trying to do the wide Ryu. I can't is, do the wide. I was about to say, is this, is this your Ryu cosplay? Like shitty dog. Yeah, you, hard. <laughs> you clearly need to do more 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 chest days. Dog. I do, bro. I need to pump some more fucking iron. I'm fucking strong. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, uh, yeah, dude. I'm honestly don't care. I I don't know why anyone has an opinion about this fucking big. I I, I, I I feel similarly. Like I think the only thing that you're allowed to have an opinion on currently is the logo, and people have been talking about the logo. So the logo that I'm okay with. You said that you like the logo. I thought the logo. I, I'm in. I, I'm in the minority. I know I'm in the minority. Okay, but like the reason why I like the logo is because it's a uh, compared to the rest. Like for example, if you look at Street Fighter Five, and you look at its logo, and then you compare it to the gameplay, and then you compare it to the UI of said game, it's mixed match. Like you look I'm at that logo, and it's like that doesn't re necessarily represent the game at all, really. Right? Except for, like, maybe the V-Trigger system, you know? But V-Trigger is honestly really boring. Like, incredibly boring. I, I think it's the defining mechanic of that game, though. It is the defining mechanic. I mean, that's why I don't play it, the game, because I think V-Trigger is boring. But it's, like, the thing is, is that, like, you look at the Street Fighter Six logo, and it seems like it's defining the game, you know? Like, I feel like once we get more information on the game, we're going to see... Uh, why the logo is the way that it is. Because it's like, the universal opinion is that the logo sucks, right? So if we don't see a change, say at Evo, or Combo Breaker, when they might show more, you know, whatever big event that, where they may show more, then that means that, like, there's something about this logo that represents a big thing in the game. Because remember, the Street Fighter Five logo also had the V, yeah, the, the 5, for the V triggers, right? So maybe Street Fighter Six is doing a similar thing, right? I, yeah, I think so. I honestly, people have been talking about the logo being placeholder, which I don't really know about. Honestly, my hope, I guess, for the game, which is the only thing I really care about, logo, whatever, the, the way that fucking Luke looks like, he wants to talk about society. Um, like, <laughs> honestly, it's it's. It's all fun. Like, it's Are all you cool. sure it's society? I thought he wants to show me Fortnite. No, it's, it's Joker. I thought he was a ninja. <laughs> I fucking hate you. You spent too much time on Twitter, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Dude, but yeah, no. I, 
he does look kind of wacky. We can both, I think we can both agree on that one. But um, I'm hoping the game is just really like, how do I like? I just want the game to be solid on launch for the people who play. Street. Like, I think yes. people give yes. Street Fighter too. I I I honestly think it's a mixture of people give Street Fighter too much shit on launch because they're like, bro, bro, oh my fucking god, dude. Like, I'm Street Fighter. imitating a fucking O Niner. All right, bro. The O Niner. Insert previous version of Street Fighter was so fucking good, dude. Like, how could you fucking? Is this your impression of me? You don't play Street Fighter, bro. But I'm an O Niner. Fair, but you, you're like an anime O Niner, so you don't count. You're anime you. O-Niner. If I was to do your voice, it would be like the deep fu- you know the the fucking chat, like the the enjoyer uh, face. Bang, 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 bang. Exactly. I you would be a fucking you would be a Chad, but these these like you know the the I think of like Street Fighter Four. Like, you know the fucking meme with the Chad stride and the fucking Virgin Walk. The the yeah. Street Fighter Four players are the Virgin Walk, right? The Chad guy, the Chad the Chad players are the fucking uh. They're the the X uh, the XX and the X players like pulling out of the woodwork. But anyway, not the point. Mm-hmm. Uh, like they're like, dude, insert version of like previous game was like so fucking good, and this new one is like cheeks. Like, bro, Ultra Street Fighter Four is a fucking dog shit version. Fuck you. You're terrible. Not really, but like, like y'all talk about that game like it's it's oh my god. This... Like, bro, okay. There's some fucked up shit in like, all, like in a lot of the later versions, of Street Fighter, like any other. Right, but people th- talk about how like like when Street Fighter Four came out, people talk about how fucking amazing Third Strike is, and it's like, bro, no, like it's good, and I like it, and a lot of people like it, and I, I get it, but you can't just like conflate it. Th- that's not how this works, right? Um, and I think the same is gonna happen with Six. I think people are gonna be like, bro, the last version of Five was like so fucking good, and then like, this version of Six is like, do- like this is dog shit. How dare you? Make- how dare they make this? Like, no, like it'll. I'm the last hoping... version of Exert was so fucking good. What is this dog shit strive? You like Rev 1 better. No, 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 no. This is supposed to mean like, this happens with every fighting game. It's oh, going to happen. okay, yeah, yeah, okay. I was about to be like, word? <laughs> no, it, it, it's just going to happen. Like, this is just the natural course of things yeah. where it's like, some people aren't going to like the changes and they're going to talk about the changes that they dislike, but they're going to... They're going to do the thing that Twitter does. They're going to take a nuanced opinion and make it very black and white. Where it's like, you either hate it or you love it. And that's what Twitter does. So My, uh, my hope is that Capcom makes a version that's good enough on launch. Where like, okay. And obviously it's going to be hard. I, I, I don't expect them to like, you know, nail it perfectly. But I hope it's kind of like the Strive launch. Sort of. Where it's like... This game is solid, it works, it functions, there's nothing like vehemently terribly broken about it. And like uh they're very committed to like making sure they're like, you know, ironing out all the kinks while it's still in this phase of like people coming in and trying to play the game. That's like the hope. Uh I uh, hope they don't do like five where it's like a games by service thing, but it's still like six fucking dollars and there's like five characters. I was literally oh, about to bring this up. I was like, I actually legitimately think that they should change up their business strategy and make this one free to play. That would be good. That because would actually like, be incredible. Because, like, what is it? Like, five seasons of DLC? Like, if I'm trying to get a friend into fighting games, right, I have to convince them to drop 60... Uh, not 60, it's what, like, 30 buckaroos on the Championship Edition, right? And then I have to yeah. convince them to spend another, like... Four, four, oh, it's $40 for the Championship Edition, right? I have to convince them to drop 40 buckaroos on that, and then I have to convince them to get the, the new season of DLC, because it doesn't come with the new season of DLC. So, that's another, like, $20 on the table. So, it's a whole new game release, right? For a genre that's already hard to get into, because once you start playing, you start getting your ass kicked, and that's not fun for anybody, right? Yeah. So, it's like, I honestly think that, like, I don't understand why fighting games haven't transitioned to, like, a sort of pay model that League of Legends has, where it's like, you play more, you can unlock more characters. I know it's because, like, a lot of people think that you have to have the characters for training mode, right? Yeah. So, so you can learn stuff. But the thing is, is that, like, for a lot of casual players, they who don't cares? care. They like, don't care? Yeah. care. Exactly. K- so it's like... K-I, I think, perfected that fucking system, too. Like, KI did that system really fucking well. Well, actually, uh, a little bit... They did, they did some of it well, some of it bad. Like, for example... For the free-to-play player, uh, they had a rotation of characters that you could play. 
So you could be a Saber Wolf fan, but then all of a sudden you can't play Saber Wolf because it's not his week, right? So That's they did fair. that. They did that part badly, but they did other things better where you can just training mode any character. Yeah. I, and the thing is, you, the, the thing that's best about that system is that you don't have to pay to play the game by itself, but you can you can literally just pay $5. And if you're like, okay, I'm a Saber Wolf main, right? I just want to play this one fucking character, $5, you're in. Like, you're done. You don't need to yeah, 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 yeah. work all the characters. You don't need to buy anything else. You're totally fine. The 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 issue with Street Fighter Five is it did that system. Like, it wanted to have a system where, okay, here are your launch characters, and you can either play with and earn fight money and get these other characters, or you can pay for them. That system works if your game doesn't cost sixty fucking dollars on launch. It's like bro, they, that's they not also good. they also completely abandoned that system anyway because like over time they cut the amount of fight money that you got over time yeah. to try and get more people to buy DLC, right? So it's like uh, what they should have done is really they should have just like. They should have just not done this mishmash of like two different payment models and just committed to this free to play model because I can see myself saying, Hey man, you want to try out fighting games? You seem like you'd like fighting games. And then I tell them it's free. And then like you just pick a character and play, you know, yeah. none of this like $60 and DLC bullshit. They already do. They already sell premium outfits. Yeah, you could literally have Street Fighter V system, make all the characters free to play, and the game would still make money because they have all the fucking skins. Like, bro, what? It, it's, 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 it, I think it's, and it's not ridiculous. I, I think later on, right, like, in, in the way that it is now, it's still fine, like, from the perspective of, like, a normal fighting game. But I think if you want to have that model on launch, you need to be either free to play, or you need to, you need to like, give some sort of incentive for it to be $60. Street Fighter Five on launch was not a sixty dollars game. It was a maybe a twenty dollars game at best, and it should have just been free to play. Yeah, they didn't have an arcade mode, which eventually they they came out with like a really really good arcade mode. But that yeah. was like what like I think three and a half years after the game came out that they came out with arcade bit, mode. I think it's a little bit sooner than that, but it was still it was still pretty bad. It's still so. like a ridiculous amount of time to go without arcade mode, and then like they they didn't come out with like survival mode until then either, and then yeah. they like. It's just, like, it's ridiculous that, like, that game was $60 on release, and it only had online versus and training mode on yeah. release. Oh, and, oh, and the, the really bad story mode that they said they were going to come out with more story and never did. Never did. I, I think, honestly, yeah, it's just hoping for that launch to be good for the people who, like, love Capcom games and are a fan of Street Fighter. Uh, Street Fighter. And uh, their like announcement for the legacy games is really cool. I'm happy that Darkstalkers is coming back and stuff. But... Yeah, but it was missing specific characters. Yeah, not oh, characters. No, no, not characters like specifically the games. I mean, like products that should have been on the pack but weren't. Because legal reasons, but also yeah, so... yeah, we, we both know what we're talking about with the. Uh, MVC two on. should be on that with rollback. Um, uh, CVS two should be on that. With rollback, but... CVS 2 could have happened, too. That's, actually, it's facts, yeah. But yeah, because they have that partnership on the their gotcha game, the KOF All-Stars gotcha game. Yeah. I mean, that's a, I think that's a little bit of a different beast, but I, I, I get where you're... Like, I get where most of the... Like, I, I, I think that you should, people should demand for that shit, because, like, fuck, man. It's been fucking years. Like, I don't understand why they don't put Marvel 2 in rollback. Thankfully, we have Fight Cade, so... We're good, but, you know. Um... Any any more thoughts on Street Fighter Six? No, honestly, there's just that new Capcom rule that they're implementing that everyone's yeah, talking about. Yeah, the licensing. So it, yeah. this actually sort of affected me because my job is to run tournaments and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I, I was a little bit worried because like uh, somebody did the math and they said like, say you have a, a local right that gets at least like about thirty members uh, yeah. every week, right? And then you have like say a pot bonus every other month. Boom! You're already over the 10k cap for a year, right? Like, the like fuck? these aren't even like huge events that you're running. This is just like a 30 man a local. 30, 30 person local, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. So it's like they expect you to to go for the higher license, which I'm assuming will cost money to license oh, yeah. out their game, right? But it, it, the other thing that's really interesting uh, is is that like one of my locals out here in Utah is hosted at a bar, right? Oh. And in the licensing thing, it actually says you can't host locals at things that sell alcohol. 
Yeah, that's that's kind of fun. I, mean, I get where they're. I kind of understand that in terms of like you don't want people to be emaciated at your tournament and like represent that on on stream and stuff. But like, bro, like what the? F because a lot of the 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 smaller fighting game community, it's actually very helpful to like host at a bar because like bars are cool with having that many people in at a single time, yep. and it gives you the space. Like, yep. that's great, right? Like, yep. but. What, what's, and, e what's even worse is that, like, uh, I saw a tweet about, like, other organizations like Riot and Ubisoft and other, and Valve, uh, with their community tournaments. And basically each one said, like, as long as you're not over, like, $25,000 for a single event, we don't give a shit. You yeah. Know? That's, that's literally every single one. And then you look at Street Fighter Six, and it's like, they want to know you. They want to know your address. They're going to send the cap cops to your house if you do anything wrong. Okay. It's tasty just, it's Tasty Peter Steve the... will be at your house. Hey, <laughs> we all don't want Tasty Steve in my house because he'll be too Hey, what the fuck? Hey, hey speak for yourself, dog. Okay? If Tasty Steve pulled up, I'd be like, bro, check everything. Twice. Stay here. He'd be like... <laughs> but yeah, uh... It's, 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 anyway, it was, uh, I, yeah. I was worried about NLBC because I know NLBC gets consistently about like two hundred and fifty dollars in pot bonuses a week. Yeah. Right. So oh. it's like they're definitely going over the cap of ten thousand each year, right? So it's True. like I don't know what they're doing, and th they already said they're walking back their decisions. But the issue is, is that a lot of people have already applied and been accepted. And you can't take that away. They already know your information. They got you, you know. So it's like they can implement, yeah, they can implement whatever they want instead of just like, like ignoring it, right? And like my my biggest advice for local hosters right now is literally don't tell anybody. Just yeah. like, cause like, are they really going to go on to like say Twitch, see your two viewer stream at the bottom of Street Fighter V's thing and say, hey? they didn't sign a license and then they're going to get a hold of you and then sue you really is that really going to happen over like a couple of dollars no bro how how dare capcom uh, force their hand and make us make it so that we have to we have to like have a lot like how how dare capcom make us not stream their game and give them free advertising the p plus community sitting here like yeah final. yeah we've been there yeah literally p plus someone knows, like someone knows how we fucking feel yeah you know how you feel the other thing that's weird about the new licensing rules is uh, you can't pay for spectators to be in there, right? And I know for, like, smaller events, typically you can just show up and watch people play for free, right? Yeah. But, like, for larger events, like, say, Combo Breaker or something like that, they make people pay for spectator passes, right? So yeah. that's, that's just strange. Like, am I just going to be able to show up to Combo Breaker and just watch whatever I want now? Yeah, I'm sure, that, I'm sure that's not going to be a case because I'm sure they talk to Capcom directly because they're big enough. But I'm yeah. worried about like, what if I'm I'm like a growing scene and I want to run my first regional? What happens to me? Am I just going to be taken advantage of? The the problem is also like, well, with things like Combo Breaker and Evo, I would imagine that like because they're big enough where they run other games, you can't like you can just say okay, I'm charging spectators for this game. And it's in the same hall. Like, what the fuck do you want me to do? And the, like, you can't say anything at that point, right? Like, I don't think Capcom can really do anything about that. If they wanted to, I guess they could. But you know, like, what the fuck? Um, I think it's just overall this whole thing. The real stupidity about all this is that you're inherently telling people this is the like. There's this new barrier that you have to clear in order to stream our game and give us free advertising. Like, bro, what the fuck? Like. These people, the, even if it's the smallest fucking local, right? Those scenes need to exist for people to want to play your game, right? For people to tune into your streams, for people to fly out to Evo, for people to watch shit. Like, you need to support those scenes. You're, you're, you doing this is not going to help. Like, it's just going to make everything worse. Um, and it did. It already has. It already has. Yeah. And Capcom's, like, this is not something that needs to be done before a big release. This is just not, like, it's super just not okay. Uh, and I guess they're trying to, like, get it really well implemented before Street Fighter 6 comes out. So, like, it's in that framework. But, like, fuck, man. I don't I don't know. This is some crazy shit. Like, I, I don't really think it's, like, a good idea in the way that they're doing it and the way they're implementing it at all. And I hope that they're, like, rolling stuff back and they're able to, like, fix it. 
Um, but it remains to be seen. Uh, as of right now, it's just really not in a good place. Um, I think that's everything for fighting games, though, but, right? but the, the, the last thing before okay. we move on to another topic, yeah. uh, they have announced yeah. that they're rolling it back. They're going to, to rethink things, but we haven't seen that yet, so put a little bonnet on this topic. Yeah. We'll but, see how it pans that's all of our fighting game uh, news uh, topics to talk about, unless you have something to talk about in terms of fighting games. I'm good. I mean, it says here that you want to talk about Kusogate. I'm honestly, I think I'm going to leave that for a different... Because I have some ideas. Okay. About that. That's, I'm going to leave that brewing a little bit uh, down the line. But um, I, I, have some, I have some stuff I wanna, I'm, I'm thinking about right now. Uh, which might come out in other ways in these episodes. Cough, cough, show, game show stuff. Cough, cough. But okay. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll figure it out. I think we can we can talk about that another day. Um, but uh, I guess we'll move on to our non-FGC stuff and move on to esports yeah. in general. Uh, we'll start with Dota. The During the two-week break, the DPC regional finals happened. And uh, the results are kind of interesting, especially for North America, because... Remember a couple of weeks ago when we announced that TSM is now coming into the Dota scene? Yeah. TSM won the DPC NA regional finals. Oh shit! Yeah, that's pretty great. And like, what's really interesting about it is that like, uh, Moon Meander, who's uh, I believe the coach for the team, he said in an interview that like the main thing about our win is just that we we came together early on, we focused on all of their own personal habits, and it's just about them breaking through their own personal habits to win the North America League, which is to- totally a total upset because prior to this, Qu- Quincy Crew was on a 6-0 win streak. So yeah. to have t- TSM come in and just absolutely wreck the floor with all of North America is pretty cool. Kind of crazy. Uh, honestly, that's kind of... Is it unheard of in Dota to, like, have a new, uh, or just, like, complete? Yes, new? yes, it is unheard of, because, uh, Quincy Crew has been around for about, like, six years, right? And now, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, they're, they're actually winning, so that was pretty interesting. But TSM, just to come off the bat, like, and looking at their roster, their roster was, like, it was solid, but I didn't ever see them, like, winning the final, like, after, like, only... I'm guessing about six months of being together because I'm sure they knew they were going to be on a team before they announced the team. Yeah. Right. But it, it's, it's quite uh, uh, cool to see NA be shaken up that way. Cause typically we just have like evil geniuses win NA every year. Or, I don't even uh, watch Dota and I know EG is like winning fucking, uh, like usually wins fucking. Yeah, yeah. 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 In North America, that's usually the case, but it's interesting that that's not the case this year. Uh, but in Europe, Team Liquid actually got beat in Grand Finals by another team. I forget what their, their name is. So that that's really interesting because uh, Team Liquid is typically the dominating force in, in Europe. And then uh, the Russian side, the CIS, uh, Team Spirit won that. And then uh, I believe PSG, LDG, LGD. So all the usual suspects won yeah. the regions. So Team Spirit and LD, LGD are like big names from what I remember. Especially recall. Team Spirit. And... and uh, it's a good thing that they got this settled like two weeks ago because currently the war in Ukraine is like wreaking havoc on all the CIS region and it's literally like half of uh, Team Spirit is Russian and the other half is Ukrainian, right? So it's actually like a really tough issue. Like they literally had to postpone. If you're involved in any esports thing, everything's postponed now. Oh, yeah. The war, basically. So it's a pretty shitty situation. But, Deep Sea Regional Finals, they happened. Also, shoutouts, kind of in a negative way. Well, no, I guess in a positive way. Uh, best of luck. I, I know we don't have a that big of an audience, period. And I doubt we have anyone in Ukraine. But, like, uh, you know, best of luck to everyone out there. Because that shit is tough. As a, as a person who's, read, read, you know, in a culture that's had to deal with a lot. Oh, my. A lot of people, like, you know, in a culture where a lot of that's kind of come up. And also just, like... Uh, like in recent history and previous history, it's fucking terrifying. Um, so you know, best of luck to everyone in Ukraine, and hopefully that stuff gets resolved soon. It's looking like most of the world is very much so against it, so that's a good that's a good sign. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, best of luck to everyone on Team Spirit and like everyone that's because that, that's not a good situation. Like no matter who you are, but especially as a competitor, like a international competitor, that it's not fucking good. Um, yeah. How did they but, end up playing then, if that was the case? It was before everything happened. 
Oh, it was like in December ish or January. No, it was two weeks ago. Remember, this war has only been going on for a week. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's fucking. Well, yeah. Hopefully, everything but pans out. In in better uh, lighter news, news. Yeah. lighter news, uh, the Dota patch finally dropped after this is the longest we've ever gone without a major patch for Dota. How long was it? It was about ten months, I believe. Oh, okay. Let me uh real quick. Let me just check something. How long has it been since Jungle Inferno TF2? Oh no. Uh, it has been fifteen hundred and ninety six days and counting since the Jungle Inferno update. This Twitter account is amazing. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. You're talking about uh you're talking about Dota. Anyway, uh, the Dota two patch dropped with uh two new heroes. Technically only one, but I consider it two. Uh, Primal Beast dropped, and how do you feel about Primal Beast? Have you seen him? Uh, is it the character, or is it... what are? Uh, I'm not really too familiar it's the, with it. It's that. the hero. It's like the big new hero. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen a little bit of them. They seem kind of interesting, as do most Dota champions. Uh, I'm going to actually look them up real quick. They're, they're like... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen them in like one or two games. They seem kind of interesting. But, um, like... I really like the character's design, because literally every single ability is just, like, I hit things, and that's it. I hit things. And that that, that helps for a really dumb, small position, too, like me. Uh, I just hit things, right? Yeah. Uh, but, like, the thing is, is that with the hero, he actually has the lowest win rate of all heroes right now, with a 40% win rate. Okay. Well, isn't that to be expected, though, with, like, newer characters? No. When Marcy came out, she had a 60% win rate. But that, was she overtuned? She was overtuned, but, like, there are other heroes that, that came out that were pretty fairly balanced. Like, when Monkey King came out, fairly balanced hero, about 54% win rate, right? So it's like, you come here with Primal Beast, and it's like, ooh. The issue is, is that the character gets really stopped by hard CC. Anytime there's hard CC on the enemy comp, it's very hard for Primal Beast to deal with it because all of his things evol revolve around, I want to get in. And if he's not in, he dies. Fair. Right? Uh, but that's not the only thing that came out with the patch. Uh, Techies got his rework. This is why I say it's a two-hero rework. Uh, why are you excited about this? I, your character's ruined. Is this you, like, dying? No, see, this is the plan. Uh, mm -hmm. once Techies gets to the Major, we're gonna revert the rework. And by we, I mean the, the collective Techies mains that own Valve now. We own Valve. You think it's Gaben? No, fuck you, dog. We made this team now. That was <laughs> yeah. us. Uh, a Techies basically plays more like a core support hero, where, like, yeah. he, has, he has great CC, he deals damage, and then he can put out mines on the map when he gets his ultimate. But yeah. it's like... He's not, like, a dude that's going to be like, okay, I suicided at level 2. Uh, I'm now going to go place mines everywhere in the jungle. See you later. Yeah, have that's fun. That's not going to be the case. He's going to be hanging out more. He's going to be making plays more, which is... Uh, I don't know how you feel about it. I'm, I... I'm indifferent on it. Like, I'm happy that there's a, there's a character that's, like, that's going to be playing Dota 2 with me instead of his own little game. But I'm in unhappy because this is just another thing of old Dota dying. Like this is this is me playing on my small violin of of sadness of being a boomer of old yeah. Dota dying. So. I think I think the, I, this argument in my head is is a lot more. There's like a part of it that's very like thought out and like oh yeah this kind of makes sense. But there's also like a part of me that's like it's just stupid. It's just me being dumb. Like first of all, when I play MOBAs. I, I, I hate myself as much as I hate everyone else. So I want to make sure that everyone is feeling just how shitty I feel. So I love playing Techies. Techies is great. Like, I get to not, like, I get to literally kill myself, like, in game, right? And make everyone else feel like shit, including the people on my team, even when I win. Fucking incredible. Like, literally, like, peak, right? Um, but in a more serious, on a more serious note, I think it's interesting to have characters like that in mo Like, it's the same concept with, like, Teemo and League. Right? Where it's like, oh, you have this character who's like a little shit, right? And like everybody fucking hates him, right? And he's like high key well, kind of well, useless. Well, the thing is, is that Timo actually plays the game. Like, that's Techies, the thing. Techies doesn't Techies play doesn't, the game. Right? 
but he's also super fucking annoying. And it's so funny. Like, you can get so many fucking stupid clips. Of and I, I love that. Like, that identity is, like, very much so techies as... Right? And it's kind of sad to see that go. Even though it's probably better overall for the balance of the... Like, it's not fun. I can understand as someone who... Like, someone who would play... Like, if someone does play Dota, right? It's probably not very fun to see techies on either side of the map. Right? And from a game design perspective... That's not a good thing. Like, you don't want... You want to make sure that this character has a role and has a position and has an identity as their own hero. Uh, I just don't know if they preserve that as, like, well in the in the rework. Um, but honestly, I think overall, I think most Dota players would probably be, like, very positive about it. Like, oh, great. Like, I don't have to deal with this, like, fucking shithead joining my game and, like, fucking basically in the entire game. That's cool. I think that's fine. Um, I just hope that... He still has, like, his, his own cool identity. Um, at least for the time being, you know, Storm Spirit all the fucking way. Storm Spirit, Faceless Void all the Storm, fucking way. Storm Spirit's very good right now because they changed how Null Talisman worked. How does it work now? Uh, at, at 25 minutes, it doubles its stat values. Right? So, oh, so, so, that's so, anyway? so currently, you'll see builds of, like, Storm Spirit buying, like, five Null Talismans, Right? And then at 25 minutes, all of a sudden, the Null Talismans become crazy good. And then he just nukes people. The yeah, issue just, is, oh, is that, like, with a build like that, you can't go high ground because you don't have any utility. Oh. Huh. So but you just kind of hold... What's up? Yeah, 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 yeah. You just hold your Null Talismans, like, forever in lane now. And it works because you can get kills. Because yeah, because that... Values you're just not gonna. You're just not gonna like. Uh, what is it? Even if you die, even if something bad happens, you're gonna get a hard fucking power spike at 25 minutes. It doesn't matter. So that's kind of cool. I actually kind of like that. That's kind of interesting. It, it, it's a really good change because a lot of the the support characters will buy the because they did this with all the basic stat items like Wraith Band, Bracer, and the Null Talisman, and they made it so that like all of them will double their stat value at 25 minutes. And it's a really good change for support characters because now supports won't feel bad about investing their so little gold on a Null Talisman or a Wraith Band because they yeah. know that the value will last the entire game. I see. It's just bad for characters like Storm who play mid, right? And then they they buy these items like and then just sit on them forever and then they lose all their... They don't have util, right? Well, but like, well, the, big, sure the, big, the biggest thing for me is, as a Meepo player is that it makes the value of doubling up on Wraith Bands even crazier. That is true. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. I think it's kind of interesting how, how it's like a starting item, right? Or like a like a you buy it early on in the game, and then it, like, that's kind of interesting how how it scales. Because I don't think I've ever seen an item like that in any other MOBA. So that's kind of cool. Like it just gets stronger at like a set point. That's kind of that's that's pretty interesting. Um, the other yeah. changes that they did were they added three new items. They added the 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 Vladimir's offering upgrade. They added a new like intelligence hero carry item which is basically sounds like it's perfect for uh silencer and then they added a new boots to the game which is an upgrade from uh tranquils so that's that's all interesting but like the thing is, is that like they didn't do a lot of like map changes like they moved they did the thing that they did the last patch where they slightly moved some of the towers but it's just a little disappointing for me as a per person who's played dota 2 for like I don't want to say I played it for five years, but the last time I played it, every major patch came with like a huge map rework, typically, and the map reworks aren't happening anymore, and we're still playing the game with the same objectives that we played two years ago. So it's a little bit disappointing from that aspect, but having a, a, the biggest thing for me for the patch, though, is that all of my characters got buffed, and that feels good. Like uh, Anti-Mage, for example... His uh, mana break now stacks with a uh, diffusal blade, mm. so you okay. can you can now it's now viable option for you to buy this early game item. Well, not early game; it's more so mid game. But like typically, about ten minutes in, you can buy this diffusal blade and uh, be viable to fight in a, a team fight because now you have a powerful mid game option, right? Or if things are going well, you can commit to a later game option if you want. So it just adds, like, options to the character, which is something yeah. that Anti-Mage has needed because he's been 
very lagging behind of other carries for the past three years, which is unfortunate for me as yeah. a anti mage picker. I yeah, honestly, it seems interesting as far as a patch goes. I've been wanting to play more Dota too. It's just that, like, bro, I have so much fucking bullshit to get done that like I I cannot play MOBAs right now. But it seems interesting, and I'm happy that Dota two is at least going in a direction that I think is like better than all the other Valve Soft titles. Even if it's not like I don't think it's at where it should be for a lot of the Dota families. Right? Like you guys would prefer more updates sooner. Uh, uh, it's not that we prefer more updates. It's more so that like we we're used to having an update come out and it completely changes how we play the game. Yeah. Like the neutral items update completely changed how we played the game. The uh, outpost update completely changed how we played the game. The uh, Monkey King update completely changed how we played the game. Like we're just we're just too used to these patches where it's like the game is literally like different. It's not like League of Legends where it's like. They add a new thing and like yeah. it, it sort of changes. I'm talking about like the literal mentality of playing the game with Dota is different. Yeah. Like preseason, even in league, preseason isn't like it's big, but a lot of times it's like, oh, we reworked the items. Okay. Uh just different builds. Uh different like maybe routes to buy items. It's it's kind of small. Generally the way you're gonna play the game fundamentally is gonna be very similar. Same thing with like reworks to dragons, reworks to a bunch of other stuff. It's like the end result might be different, but the way you get there is, like, basically the same. Uh, and so it's just about understanding how those mechanics work. But in Dota, I imagine it's a lot bigger, and, like, the fundamental ways that the game is played is completely different from fashion to fashion. But I think it's cool that it's at least a little bit more sort of, like, stagnant in the time where, you know, maybe there's, like, more competitive play. That's kind of cool. Um, well, it's, it's always been that way. Like, Dota is always balanced in, in the sense of, like, a fighting game is balanced, where, like, there are, they'll come out with a major patch, and then there won't be another patch for another six months. Whereas, like, I believe League of Legends is on a two-week cycle. Yeah, three-timer, and then preseason every every year, mid, mid-season every year. Yep. So, yeah. So it's like, they like letting the meta breathe in Dota. It's just that, like, good. we're used to having, whenever there's a major patch, something big happening, right? And we haven't had a major patch in a while, and this was supposed to be a big major patch, and it didn't feel like a big major patch. Yeah. I'm, I'm, like, I, yeah, I'm looking, f- I'm looking forward to watching some Dota or playing some Dota sometimes, but I'm, ex- I'm, I'm happy for everyone who's playing, because I know a lot of people that are playing Dota right now. Seems as though it's a good patch, and that's, that's what matters. Um, now, I- this next topic, I'm even more excited to talk about, because it fixes something about Valorant that I have had, I don't want to say I've had significant issue with playing, but significant issue with watching, Okay. Now, this new Valorant patch came out. It includes the Yoru rework uh, and nerfs to Astra and then buffs to all the other controllers, okay? Now, the big reason why I'm excited, not about the Yoru rework, the Astra rework, is because Astra was such a good controller that every single comp, no matter what map you're playing, you play Astra because that's how good she is, okay? And what's even worse is that the, because of the way she played, it slowed the game down because she can place a star and then you had to slow down because you can't push a site because if you get sucked once, you're you're practically dead because the suck has, uh, whenever it's done, it does it vulnerable on you and there's no way you're winning a gunfight when you're invulnerable, right? So they, they nerfed literally everything about her. Like literally everything about her is worse like she has one less star her her, every time she uses any ability all of her abilities go on cooldown for 45 seconds uh yeah like like this is a big nerf like uh, her smokes last a tiny bit longer but that's supposed to equate for the cooldown nerf yeah but it's still like there are so many things that they nerfed about her that are just like, oh my god, finally, you can now finally play the other controllers, which goes along with the buffs to those controllers. Like, Omen's uh, smokes now deploy uh, almost three times faster, so now Ooh. Omen's going to be more viable. That's and good. then uh, uh, they buffed his teleport to make it a little bit faster. And then uh, they gave Brimstone, they've raised the, the amount of space that he can drop smokes. And then they uh, made the stim give a speed buff to anybody who walks through it. 
Oh, that's fucking sick. Yeah, and then uh, they made it so that uh, I believe... I think that's the only significant changes that they did most of the controllers. I think uh, Viper got a slight nerf, but it's not huge. It was just like, oh, we just want more people picking a variety of controllers than what they currently are. Uh, seeing a variety of characters is a lot better than just seeing Astra every single fucking So What I'm worried about next is that they're going to hit Sova and Jet next, because Sova and Jet are the big, like... Always pick these characters. Oh my boy! Please not yeah, my fucking boy. Yeah, 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 they're gonna what hit your boy, that? dog. But like, take that away. Take back. Like, nerf all the other fucking characters. Not Sova, please. I need that man. If they still make Sova like really good, I wouldn't mind. The big issue for me is Jet currently, because Jet is like literally the best character in the game, picked in every single comp. Whereas like Sova is only picked on specific maps, which I think is a better place to be in the meta, yeah. where it's like I'm good on these maps, you know. But it's like. Jet is like every single map you're playing Jet, every single comp you're playing Jet, no matter yeah. what you're playing Jet. So I'm hoping that like their next patch is going to be like, let's focus on Jet and get her in line. But now, a, a long time ago, you know this. I was a Yoru picker. Yeah, of course. A disgusting a Yoru. Yoru picker. Okay. And now I can finally return to my Yoru picking ways because he's now a slightly better character. <laughs> I don't want to say he's like crazy good because I haven't. I actually haven't played the new patch. I'm planning on playing it tomorrow with a friend of mine that we typically grind rank, ranked with. But uh, it should be fun. Should be exciting. Uh, I'm actually really excited to play in this meta because I think it's going to encourage like exciting plays. You know. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I know. I know that like the core of Valorant is about making safe options and safe picks and stuff like that. But the thing is, you don't give Brimstone a 50% movement speed buff on a stim pack if you're not expecting people to go rush a site excitingly. Yeah, 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 go buck wild. That's what I'm excited about. I'm excited to do these things in my games, you know? I think that's honestly going to make the game more fun, uh, for sure. I think it'll also probably help the competitive scene, but it it, it remains to be seen how, like, like, how good these things that they're buffing other characters are because they that could also push the ceiling of the game which is like good and bad in multiple different ways um but yeah i think that's cool like overall like buffing characters and nerfing characters is like really dope in valorant because like it's a lot more a lot more a lot more variety than like buffing guns uh and it's a lot more not subtle but it changes the game a little bit after uh playing valorant for quite a while it's very strange to play this game coming from the approach of league of legends because, like, I'm used to playing League of Legends where things were just not okay all the time. Yeah. Like, that's usually the state of League of Legends. There's always, like, issues with the game, right? But, like, looking at Valorant, like, I can directly see a roadmap in my head of how exactly they can make the balance perfect in the game. Because they're almost yeah. there. They're literally almost there. Like, the if you look at the Sentinels meta, the Sentinels meta is, like, actually perfect. Like, every single agent has, like, a specific purpose for every single map. This is why you pick each one. You you put, look at the controllers. They already nerfed Astra. The controllers are gonna now going to get more representation. And then you look at the duelists. Most of the duelists do get picked. The issue is is that Jet is just always picked. So it's like you can pick, like just get fix up Jet, you know, and then that's yeah. it. And then like literally the the game is good, you know, game good. That's it. You yeah. Know? So that, that it, it actually makes me happy to play the game because I understand that like by play, by investing my time into this game, I'm not going to get screwed over. So yeah, the problem is though with a lot of Riot's properties, especially with League, they just change shit to change shit. Like they're not trying to make the game perfect. They're really only after making the game different, which is which is fair in its own right. Like I think if you had the same version of League for like a fucking year. Honestly, that might not be bad, actually. But uh, if you have the same version of League forever, it would be bad, right? Like, you want there to be variety. But, like, Dota player, like, in Dota, they change the game every every six months. And I think that's great. Like, if you like the patch, and the patch is good, and it changes a lot, you can let the meta sit and let it rock, and people will learn shit, develop shit, and then there might actually be problems that you need to address in because people have time to sit and, like, work on it, right? Like, I think, uh, same thing with actually DBFZ, which is, like, 
where they let the game rock for like a year, right? Like, yeah, Kid Goku was good, right? Like, I think Kid Goku was actually problematic in a lot of ways, right? But we wouldn't have known about King Gohan or Base Vegeta or any of those other characters that were really good in season, uh, season two as well if it weren't for the fact that they let the patch sit for them, right? So then those characters would be able to be adjusted and worked with. And then also the weaker characters were able to like kind of move up in a lot of ways. And then they were also able to buff the ones that just could not, right? So like doing that in terms of like Valorant balance would actually be sick. I just worry that they might, it's like they well, want to change the game. The, the biggest thing is, is that if you look at this patch, uh, remember they, they made a lot of gun changes when the new season came out, right? If you look at this patch, no gun changes. Zero gun changes, actually. So it's like, it's clearly that they're they're okay with the guns. And it's like, and I'm okay with the guns too, because I feel like after they nerfed the Ares, I actually think like things acclimated really well, where like each gun is sort of viable. The only one that I think is like not sort of vi viable is the Bulldog, but I might be talking out my ass because I see the Bulldog appear in more pro matches nowadays. So it's like... Yeah. So it's like, I honestly feel like each... The gun meta in Valorant is actually pristine currently. Like, so it's it, again, it's really nice that like they they see it in a way that they want it, and they're going to keep it that way, you know. And then now they're going to target other parts of the the patch cycle that they're worried about. The only yeah. thing that I think is an issue with the game is again the maps. Like the maps are still feel like I had this really big thought the other day while I was watching Pro Valorant, where it's like I feel like I'm playing a Doom map. When I'm playing uh, Valorant, weirdly, you know, you know, you, you know what I mean? Because like a lot of a lot of Valorant maps are like very hallways, like orthogonal walls, to quote the great Tim Rogers, right? <laughs> like, I, like just think, just think about uh, a sent B site, right? When you go on, go to a, a sent B site, there are multiple hallways that you have to go through. Yeah, right? or like us. Uh, no, I'm the, no Haven, um, Seaside. A Haven Seaside, literally a hallway that you have. Literally a hallway, and then a second hallway, and then a third and, hallway. Yeah, and that's then it's what I'm talking awesome. about. That's what I'm talking Bro, about. It's like that's actually rough. You know, Ascent Seaside Ascent actually is a fucking doom. Like it's like a place where you like uh, in in uh, 2016 where you walk in and then the enemies start spawning and there's yeah, like a exactly. box, and there's another fucking box and there's another box and there's the demon heart in the center that you have to rip yeah. out. You just but crush it and then you start to fuck, yeah. <laughs> but it's like, that's literally the only other issue. And that's not even that big because uh, it's like, the I think the maps are okay. I don't think they're terrible, you know, but I might be talking to my ass because I'm not that experienced in FPS, but it's still uh, like... I think a lot of like better professional players, like like CSGO players do not like the maps. I think even, the Va even Valorant players are very like iffy about the maps. Because it's very samey. And it's also just... That's what I mean. It's all Doom maps. They're all Doom wads. <laughs> I, it's always been Doom wads. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it always has been. Yeah, it always bad. has been, dude. Uh, Half-Life was just a very big Doom wad. Uh, I can only know, I think Half-Life is basically a big Doom wad in a different... But a, an engine that was based in... Anyway, not the point. Uh, we're not gonna get Tim Rogers up in here. Uh, but but what they said... Hello. Uh, and welcome they, back to the video they, game. They did say that there's not going to be a new map in this uh, episode, so I'm oh, okay. assuming. So that means that like there's not going to be a new map till April, and when there is a new map, I'm hoping that it really shakes their map design up because I, because honestly, the only map that I think of that's like sort of different from all their maps is Breeze, and I love Breeze. I love Breeze. Is Breeze is sick, actually. I really um, like Breeze as well. A lot of people hate Breeze because of. Uh, uh, I believe it's really defense oriented, like it's really defense favored. But like, I really love Breeze because I feel like angles on that that map feel really nice to hold. And there, there's like a lot of like different misplays that you could do based on rotations because the middle of the map is so big. Yeah. Right. But I think. Other... <laughs> oh god. But other than that, like, I'm hoping for more. For yeah, honestly, I think the game is in a really cool spot, and Valorant is actually doing really well, surprising. I mean, like, I didn't think it would do poorly, but um, as, like, a game that, like, is really, like, elevating tax shooters, I think it's doing a good job. I think, honestly, even their map design has gotten better, uh, though that... What's the map with the fucking zipline? Fracture? 
Yeah, that, that map is kind of fucking I, wacky. I, but... I like that it's map. Fun. Don't get me wrong. I like people, that map too. People hate that map because you have to hold so many different angles. But it's like, yeah. as, a, as a Sentinel player who can hold multiple angles, I like that map. <laughs> yeah, in Valorant, you actually can hold multiple because of the way the game works. So that's kind of cool. I just think, like, I think they need to, like, make it... I want them, I want them to make, like, a good, consistent, like, solid map. Like, a, a, like a not a, a, not a, um, a, a, a fracture or not, like, a breeze. Like, I want there the, to be a good, like, a solid the, map. The game, really the game just needs its dust, too. That's the no, that's too, no, no, don't, don't fucking say that. No, no, Please. This, is, this is what I mean by dust too. I, I mean, like, we need a map that really defines, like, hey, this is Valorant. Sure. This is the way that you play the game. Like, I was thinking Mirage. Mirage, that's Icebox. Have you played Icebox? Don't fuck, no, dude, not, you, no, no, no. I mean, like, the, the, the Valorant version. It's not Icebox with, like, a fuck, no, no, absolutely not. I think. I oh, speaking of, of Icebox, I, uh, it got changes in this past patch. Oh, really? Like the entire B site got changed. Oh wow! You know the oh, entryway cool. where like uh, you come in and then you exit into the hallway of death. Yeah. Right. It's now yeah. you. Uh, you know that little like divot next to the building. That's where the yeah. doorway is now. Instead of exiting oh. into the hallway of death. Yeah, and then That's they moved. Cool, uh, they moved the yellow box instead of having it be like angled like this. It's now just straight up like horizontal like this and then it has like boxes here and then, oh, that's they, sick. And then they changed the entire uh b site where you plant the bomb where it's like you know how everybody always defaulted right next to those boxes yeah yeah now you just like there's a you know the the big huge like double box that were there yeah it's now like a a, a t box an, an i box you know like a box where it's like cross cross Oh cross, yeah, 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 right. And then the bombs can go right there in the corner of the the eye, right? Oh, okay. So it's like they've completely changed that site. So I don't know how that's gonna. That's cool. Up. But but that site needed changes. Every time you wanted to enter that site, you're like, okay, let's hope nobody's holding an angle. <laughs> I'm just shocked, yo, dust, yo, dust. We need a dust to it. No, we don't need a dust to it, Valorant, bro. I don't want to see a fucking mid doors. I don't want to. I don't want to fucking have a buy around. Where I'm like, I start off. I, I guess I have to buy smokes. I have to buy smokes so I can co go across mid doors. That shit's fucking stupid. I don't know why. No, absolutely not. I, I have I, I have a friend who plays CS. At, at, like, least, at least I didn't t say like we need an Aztec. That's Aztec's actually not that bad. Oh my! I can't believe you just said that to me. Aztec's how, not like how, 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 how do you shoot uh, CTs on that map? You can't see them. They're invisible. I mean, yeah, good scrub. Oh, question mark? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 but for real, I have a friend who plays comp CS and he's like, Dust 2 is fucking dog shit. I don't know why they put that. And the game, and it, mid doors got fixed and it's still a problem. Like, because motherfuckers are like buying and then landing and then boosting on top of each other just so they can peek mid doors with an op. It's like, bro, what the fuck? Like, I don't know. Anyway, we'll, we'll move on from that. Honestly, it's, it's, it's cool that the game got a patch and I'm actually really excited to play it again. And it's a, it's a good patch. It's like a, good a, a crazy good patch. Yeah. And then, you want to talk about 100 Thieves, actually, did you? Oh, yeah, 100 Thieves. Okay, so the funniest thing happened with the esports scene. So the, the real uh, close qualifiers for the big uh, Valorant Championships tour is happening right now. And it's basically like LCS League type of deal where like everybody yeah. plays against each other and they all get points based on how they play. So yeah. 100 Thieves played two games with the current roster. And they after those two games, literally two games. Like I'm not, ta I'm talking about like we played against NRG, we played against uh, T1, right? Yeah. And then after those two games, they kicked two people from their team. Literally two games. They didn't even let the season play out. They didn't let anything happen. They just kicked them. And now they they, have, they, have, they need two more members. Was there any reason given? No. They just said goodbye, Baby J, and I think uh, another person, I forget what his name is. But they, they're keeping their mainstays, which are Hiko, Asuna, and then I think one more person. Hiko and Asuna are sick. Um, oh, that's really trippy, though. It's like, funny. Just take it immediately. I, I think it's hilarious how, like, we're in the closed qualifier, and then they're not even willing to let their team play out after two losses. I think at that point, you do have to commit, though. Like, 
like anything. Like if you're in a competitive situation like that, unless there's maybe like some team like pro- like like they want to leave and you're like, bro, what? And then they're just like, we're gonna go. You have to. Be. Like at that point, if they're forcing your hand, like as players, I can kind of get it. Like if they want to go too, and you're like, okay, we're, we're we lost too, we can let them go. But I don't know. It's mid, just really mid, weird. mid season just screams mismanagement. It, yeah, it's not a good it's not a good look. I think for any team or organization to do that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's just kind of shitty. But hopefully it works out. I'm, I'm a big fan, I'm a big Arsenal fan personally. Uh, I can't believe you like that guy. Every, Wait, really? Every, every time I, I see that guy, it gives me off like a vibes of people in the anime FGC who think that we're they were like so good that they were above everybody else. Every time I see him, I'm just like, oh my god, dude, you'd fit right in with the anime FGC. I feel like it's I feel like it's it, there's something with you and quirky white dudes. <laughs> he's not even quirky. He's not even quirky. He's like he's like edge. He's like edgy white dude. That's what he is. Emo white dudes. I don't know. Same done. Same emo shit, white dude. dudes. Emo, emo. I gotta dudes. get my fucking. I gotta get my hair done. Hold up. Yeah, you gotta cover one eye. You know, you gotta do the whole yeah. shit. The I got my tragic backstory. I used to fucking play. I used to play BB tag. No, you uh. gotta say. You gotta say like I used to play CS Source. <laughs> you fucking Valorant players, bro. See me in one point six. I'll fucking smoke you. <laughs> I played one. I played Source. <laughs> uh. But yeah. uh... To close out tonight, uh, let's let's talk about Risk of Rain. Oh, for real? All right. Um, well, honestly, this recent pa- I mean, it's 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 kind of small, but the patch uh, it's not the patch, the DLC for Risk of Rain two. So Risk of Rain two, if you guys don't know, I'm super big fan. Um, and uh, the game has been slowly updated. So um, when I started playing, it was the 1.0 update. So they had a, a, a beta for like quite a while. Where they were slowly updating the game, they were getting like uh, new characters in and like doing new mechanics and stuff. And eventually, with the 1.0 update, they gave a final boss, and um, yeah, and the game was like released uh, fully. I started playing. The game was fucking incredible. Put like 250 hours in, like or not 200. I've been in like 200 hours on launch uh, of the of the 1.0 in like two weeks or like three weeks. I mean, I mean, literally any time. I'm like, I wonder what Dopio is doing. I do see you on Risk of Rain. Recently, yeah, because of that. Um, but, uh, because of the DLC, but I, I love the game. I love the progression in the game. I love the way the game plays. Because I play Rogue, I've, I've played some roguelikes. I've played Nuclear Throne. Um, I've, like, dabbled in Isaac a little bit. Um, what else, what others have I played? I've played a couple different ones. But my, like, the reason I just could never really get into it was because A, it was kind of a time sink. And B, like, um, the mechanics just weren't, like, from, like, top down shooters are just not my thing, like, often. Um, and, um, what is it? Nuclear Throne, I played on controller, which is not, a, not it. Um, but with Risk of Rain, it's like a 3D, like, or a three, it's like a, a third-person shooter, kind of like Overwatch, or like, uh, not even like Valo, but Valo's a first. But it's like a third-person shooter in, with abilities in the vein of Overwatch, which is really cool. Uh, and then there's like the items, which give a lot of, like, there's a lot of technical depth in the game with the items, and there's... You basically go from this, like, scrawny weakling to becoming a fucking god, and then you die. You get, like, two hit by a fucking wisp, and you're like, okay, I'm back again. I'm doing this again. Doing this shit again. Right? And it's fun. It's really, really addictive. Um, and, yeah, and the, and the graphics are incredible. The game is just awesome. But, yeah, so the, that 1.0 update, played a shit ton. Anniversary update of the 1.0 update, so, like, a year after I, I, I started playing it, that shit dropped, got on that shit again, and it was fucking amazing. Put another, like, 50 hours in the now uh we've been waiting for this dlc which is about three updates big in terms of what they were saying i think it's actually a little bit what's that i i spoke to my brother about it and my brother told me that the update is so big that the devs were so lazy that they didn't even come out with patch notes oh no they didn't yeah and now there's like a subreddit thread where you have to follow it to make sure you know what changed yeah i mean that's a little not a not misleading but it's like a little bit fucky because a lot of the technical details yeah like there's not a lot of shit that's like uh like a lot of the specific nitty-gritty yeah you, you have to like fall you have to look look for that shit through some it's kind of a thing, yes but the the major changes they had a whole like couple dev notes of, of them explaining like yeah we're putting in these enemies uh these are the characters these are mechanics right um which is really cool 
Um, but yeah, I think I think they're dropping a, a, a patch notes later on. Hopefully, that's the, the the dream. But the game is really sick. Like I'm, I've honestly been enjoying playing the patch. Uh, they added a whole new final boss. Uh, they put in a whole new, a couple different new areas in like the base game and when you go to the void. Like they added the whole void stuff, which is really cool. Um, the patch is just awesome. And honestly, the way that they've been doing it, like if you buy the DLC on release, it's like ten dollars right? The game itself is, like, discounted when the DLC drops. If you buy a bundle that's even cheaper, which is, like, just a fu- It's awesome. Like, the deals that they've been doing with Risk of Rain is just, uh, like, I think it's, like, the pinnacle of fucking indie. Like, it's fucking great. Like, the way that they've been marketing it, the way they've been talking about it, the way that, like, they get people... Because the way they market the game is that, A, it's super fucking affordable, B, it's, like, mountains of content for, like, basically nothing. And see, it's like uh, the the way the the community around the game like it facilitates a, a, a big community, which is nice because it's a multiplayer game. Um, like you can play it single player, and it's really fun. But the main appeal of the game is that it's a roguelike that you can play with more like uh, two or more people, right? Like around I think the tops off of four, right? And it's great; it still functions perfectly because it's built for that kind. Of thing. That's what's awesome. I think like uh, we need more like kind of co op co op games in like general because there aren't that many out right now. And Risk of Rain does, like, the roguelike co-op, like, co-op roguelike, I think, better than any other video game. So, that's really awesome. And I've been really enjoying playing with my friends. So, um, yeah, I was just, I've just been really hyped about that, and I've been putting in a lot of time to it, um, to the dismay of my grades in college. Not really. I've been focusing. It's cool. <laughs> as, as you wipe the sweat from your forehead? Yeah, I have, like, like over through at 12 today. What? No, 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 you don't. You don't have homework to do at twelve. What? I do. Oh, For real? I actually. Do. Okay, okay, okay. But we'll we'll talk about our last topic now, which is uh, about World of Warcraft. I wanted to hear uh, you talk about this actually. I'm very interested. Okay, so I've been playing like lots of World of Warcraft, but uh, in a I different do. way. In a different way, you know. Oh, okay. I have a I have this weird goal. Okay. It's oh, very, is this? Oh, okay. I'm ready. I have oh. I, I have this weird goal, and the goal is is to level up every single class of goblins in the game. I'm currently on my third goblin, okay? And it's weird how, like, immersed I get while playing the game with this goal, you know? So, clarify for me, as someone who doesn't play WoW, right? Like, uh, the whole thing is that you... So, you, there's, like, different classes of goblins, I assume. There's, like... Well, so the way the game works is that every time you create a new character, that character selects a class for themselves, right? And so when you create a new character, you select from races, and each race can only be specific classes, right? Okay. Yeah. And for goblins, you can be six, uh, six classes, which is a death knight, warrior, hunter, mage, priest, warlock, shaman. Oh wait, it's actually okay. seven. I lied. Okay. Uh, so it's like. Uh, so far, I've made a mage and a rogue. Okay, so I've made those classes, and they're both at level sixty now, right? And are those just, hmm? are those max level, or where are you trying to that, get the level? That that's max level. Sixty is max okay. level. The minute I hit sixty, I go to a safe place to log them out, and I log them out, and then I start on the next one. Okay, and I'm now working on the mage. Okay. Now, weirdly, this has brought me a lot of enjoyment. Like it's literally made me be like. Oh man, I can't wait to get home so I can continue leveling, right? Because like, uh, the end game systems of Shadowlands, which is the latest expansion of World of Warcraft, is very like, it's you know in Pokemon Sword and Shield, where you went on a route and the route is one straight line, because it's the devs intended for you to walk this one straight line. Yeah. In Shadowlands, the progression to get make your character is like the same thing, except the straight line has lots of rocks on it, and you don't have shoes on. Oh, so it just sucks. Yeah, so it just sucks. You're just like, uh, 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 as you go over this this rocky line uh, <laughs> to try and complete your character, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's like the thing is, is that I'm literally curtailing that and saying, "Fuck you! I'm going on my own pr- progression system." And that's what I'm doing. It's literally like I'm picking a goblin, and the other thing is that they have this cool system called, uh, like, it's not called time walking, but it's like you do a different expansions campaign, where it's like I if I want to relive Wrath of the Lich King, I just go up to an NPC and say, "Hey, I want to relive Wrath of the Lich King," 
And what happens is, is that all the Wrath of the Lich King content gets scaled to my level, no matter what level I am, right? So that's, that's kind of what I, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I've been doing. Is that like I on the rogue I did like four zones of the Wrath of the Lich King zones, and it was really fun because I've never experienced that content at all, right? Okay. And then and uh, on the the first character, which is the, the Death Knight, uh, yeah. I did Cataclysm zones, and I've never experienced Cataclysm zones. So that was a very cool experience, right? And so now on this new character, I'm doing more Cataclysm Zones because uh, Cataclysm Zone was a redesigning of the entire world world. So there's yeah. like 40 zones that I could do leveling in, right? That I could pick from. So I'm doing more zones that I haven't experienced yet. So currently I'm, I'm in Ashenvale on my Mage Goblin uh, killing Alliance dudes because that's the theme of Ashenvale. But it's like, it's really fun to approach this game as like, I want to explore the old world or I want to explore the lore or I want to explore, uh, do cool events, you know, and stuff like that. And then not only that, I, hmm? Go ahead. Oh, not only that, I also really like, uh, goblins themselves. Yeah. So it's like, I've always wanted to level up a goblin, but I've never committed to it. So I just randomly was like, fuck it. I'm just leveling up all the goblins, you know, just to have them ready. Yeah. Y you know? I think it's really cool. Like, so it lets you kind of experience like you're kind of, you're experiencing the past of WoW, like in whatever way you you really want to. But it's also that like you're progressing something that you can like use later on down the line. Exactly, and that's the biggest thing for me because soon uh, they're going to announce 10.0, which is the next expansion. And because the nine nine point two is the final patch of Shadowlands, I mean they're going to have like a sub patch nine point two point five, yeah. but it's basically the final major patch of Shadowlands, yeah. and so that means that they're going to announce the new expansion. And there's already been big leaks on the expansion. Like it's basically confirmed that the next expansion is going to be called the Dragon Isles, and it's going to be uh, supposedly the leaks say that it's going to introduce uh, the Black Dragon race which is going to be very, very cool. But it's like, the biggest thing for me is that like, uh, it'd be nice if I had all these classes ready for the next expansion. Cause I've never been the type of guy that has all of the classes leveled up. I've always yeah. been the guy that's like, oh, these are my favorites. And I'm just going to level up those classes. Like currently uh, for Shadowlands, I had my monk leveled up to 60, my Magar monk. And then I had my Tauren Death Knight leveled up and then that's it i didn't oh, even level up my my typical main which is warlock right so so now it, it's just like it just is interesting for me to be like driving home and being like man i can't wait to get on wow tonight so i can keep leveling and stuff like that or i can keep experiencing these cool things like it was just cool to go to vast which is like a completely underwater zone and and uh, experience that zone and supposedly people hate that zone because it's underwater but i actually really liked it because it was different from every other zone um it was also cool to do dragon blight in northrend because the wrathgate cinematic is in that zone and i've never experienced that cinematic while playing the game i've only watched oh. it on youtube so that was very cool that's uh, just cool though like being able to go and go back and like look at those it just represents that like Oh, this is kind of a, a, a dig at Blizzard, but it's like, it kind of represents that, like, World of Warcraft has about, like, 17 years of content in yeah. the game, but Blizzard doesn't use it in a proper manner, because if I level up, what one of the worst things about this experience is, is that once you hit level 50, which is 10 levels away from max, they literally make it so that the old worlds don't uh, scale to you anymore. Yeah, why? exactly. That's literally like... What uh, the reason do they have to do that? Like... The, the reason why is because they want you to start the Shadowlands quest lines and start with the Shadowlands system mechanics. Fucking sleeper, bro. What the yeah, fuck? Yeah, yeah. So like literally every single time I level up uh, uh, these goblins, I'm having tons of fun from 1 to 50. And then when I hit the Shadowlands content, I'm like... I, I basically phone it in, you know? <laughs> like I'm just like groaning at the process of doing the last 10 levels, you know? Yeah, but, that's fucked up. Yeah, like, it's just like it's it's ridiculous to like force a player to do something that they don't want to do. You know, yeah. but the game's like 
no, you have to do this. And it's like, but I'm the player. I want to do something that I want to do, you know. That's so okay. But uh, currently on this mage, I've been doing a lot of uh, PvP to level up in between my questing. So I'll queue for PvP while I'm just doing questing in Ashen Vale. And this is where that tweet came in. Or I'm talking about seeing oh, the real fighting. You need to explain this shit, dog. I, um, I was okay. fighting. I was in shit. I'm like, bro, oh, what the fuck? Fighting okay, in a uh, 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 basin. And I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Wait, no, say, that, say, say, say that one more time. Blacksmith in Arathi Basin. Okay, so uh, one of the oldest PvP maps in WoW, like literally in, it's in vanilla WoW, is called a map called Arathi Basin. Okay. Okay? And in the map, it's basically like a capture the flag type of map, except there's multiple places that you have to go to. It's kind of like Star Wars Battlefront. Yeah. You know? So there's yeah. there's one that's right in front of... Uh, uh, what's it called? That's right in front of the Horde base, which is called the Farm. Then there's... So the map is like this. It's Horde Alliance, right? Yeah. Okay? The, the Farm is here. Okay? Then there's the Lumber Mill up here. Then there's the Mines over here. Then there's the stable right here, right underneath the, the, the Alliance camp. And then in the center, where typically a lot of fighting happens, it's, it's called the Blacksmith, right? And that's what that tweet was about, because I was playing, like, PvP, and I was having fun, even though I was losing. Because uh, a lot of... A, a thing that happens when you're leveling up and playing PvP, a lot of people will do a thing called twinking, where they're, they'll level up to 29, or like 19, because brackets are divided by 10 levels. So when oh. you hit 20, yeah, 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 yeah. So they'll, 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 they'll stop their experience. They'll go to the capital city to stop their experience, and then they'll just make the most optimal build for that level bracket, right? That's actually kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually kind of cool. I've never participated in it, but other players have, clearly. And I was just getting wrecked by these twinks, right? That's kind of weird. To, <laughs> don't take that out of context. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> don't <laughs> take that. Fuck, I wish Devin was in this fucking chat, bro. Holy shit. Don't I was getting wrecked by these fucking twinks the other day. Don't take that out of context. But I was having fun because, like, it really brought me back to my days where, like, I remember in middle school, I would have, like, a Christmas break and I would just, like, play PvP and WoW because yeah. that's what I had fun with. And it was just, like, and it just brought me back to those moments. I was like, "Yeah, I'm just, I'm just having fun, you know. That's that's literally what I'm trying to do while I'm playing World of Warcraft, and it, that's that's been my experience." So that's sick fun. as fuck. Mm -hmm. Holy, shit. I respect it. That's actually dope. Like, I think honestly, they should use their past. I mean, the the benefit of WoW versus like a lot of other MMOs right now that are popular is that WoW has a past, and the past is good. Like, just fucking use it. What the fuck? Like, the the biggest thing is is that if you go to FF14. This is a big feature in FF14. You can actually replay all the old content, like any of the raids, and you can yeah. you can literally click an option that sets everybody's item level to how it was back then. Yeah, I remember right? you talking about this actually. This yeah, is yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And in, in WoW, they don't have anything like that except for time walking. And time walking is like dungeons only. Like, you can't do it to raids, you can't do it to anything, and it's on a weekly rotation. So you don't even have to have control of which content you're doing. Oh, like, like currently you you can do uh, Abyss of Pandaria stuff, right? But it's like that's Abyss of Pandaria. Who cares? Yeah. You know, it's like, what if I want to go kill Illidan and have it be just like as if I was it was back in the day? You know, what yeah. if I want to do that and stuff like that? But there is some limelight to this because supposedly in all these leaks, uh, some of them say that like they're reworking that and making it so that it that's happening with the next expansion so oh, who nice. knows who knows yeah. it might be happening so yeah well see me in blacksmith of arati basin or whatever Ara the fuck oh, arathi oh, basin arathi basin there we go dude it, it, once you've gone to arathi basin once no actually it's not even arathi basin the real the real shit is the if you go to warsong gulch that's the real shit okay see me in warsong gulch basically I'm just you're just writing the tweets as we're fucking doing this, huh? I could I could write another one right now. Be like, yo, see me fucking outside. The <laughs> Real time body tweeting, dude. Fuck, POV. He's he's fucking posting some godlike shit to Twitter. But yeah, what's, what's honestly, funny is is that somebody responded to that tweet and was like Street Fighter 3S, and I'm like, 
Dog, you don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about fucking World of Warcraft, and you're over here trying to see me in Third Strike. Get the hell out of my timeline. That's not Third Strike players, though. You'll be tweeting. You'll be tweeting about some stupid shit, and they'll be like, "Bro, you you trying to run it up? I got the fight kit up right now. Tell me your tell me your username." They're like a three S Makoto player. He picks uh Super One. Just thought I thought she does a super. Just got like. Oh, well, yeah. Fuck. Well, yeah. That, I think that's it for this week, right? That, that is it for this week. Uh, where, where can they find you, Dope Yell? Well, I'm on this Twitch account. Uh, Twitch which is? Says, mm-hmm. uh, which, you know, hype. Uh, I, I don't stream here that often, but uh, when I do, it's usually WNF, or if I'm playing in a fighting game tournament, I'll, I'll usually always stream it. Or, obviously, the podcast we do here every week on probably starting thursdays i don't know yeah, how I'm... thursdays are kind of wonky for me because i have stuff to do tonight i do it at, at, at the night time uh and i hang out with my girlfriend uh during the day so it's a little bit of a weird time but i think i can probably get it sorted out um same uh, but you know whatever time we decide to choose we'll obviously have it up and we'll we'll talk about it in the so as far as we're concerned right now it's thursdays uh you can find us there i'm on twitter at dopio I thought it was Shoto Bro 23. Might be Shoto Bro 23. Uh, I think it's still Shoto Bro. Yeah, Shoto Bro. At Shoto Bro 23 on Twitter. Um, Insta as well. Uh, but. Uh, um, and. Watch. Yeah, just this twi- this Twitch, my Twitter, which is linked in the Twitch, and then my YouTube, which is linked in the Twitch as well. But I don't upload to YouTube. Um, yeah, and then, Bryce, how about you? Where can people uh, find your you beautiful find immaculate me. Twitter? You can find me on Twitter at uh, Bounty X Hunted, uh, and then uh, I'll probably upload this podcast to uh, my YouTube channel, which is Mister Bounty X Hunted. Yeah. Uh, no, no dot for that. It's just Mister Bounty X Hunted. Um, but yeah, uh, that'll probably be uploaded t- sometime tomorrow. But yeah, yeah, thanks guys. Yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Take care. Have a wonderful rest of your week, and we'll see you in the next one. That was Frame Trap. <laughs>